It's me. So I am here awkwardly laying on my table in front of this camera today because I got some more native crafts for you. So what I'm doing today, as you can see in the title, I am going to be making a ribbon skirt. Okay, so a little disclaimer, I do have kids, so you'll probably hear them. I also have a pug, so you'll probably hear him. And uh, I'm not a ribbon skirt expert, so if you're looking for some tips and tricks, probably won't be the place to go. But if you're just looking for like an entry level, like how do I make this, a real simple one, I got you, girl. So you don't really need like all these tools. These are just uh, what I have because I'm a seamstress. I like to sew. I don't just sew native crafts. I sew all kinds of shit, so. But some basic tools you'll need, um, some pins. You'll need some good scissors. I got some special ones here too. You'll need a measuring tape. You know, sewing machine, the like. I also have some fabric and ribbon, elastic band is another supply you'll need. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure around my waist. I plan on having my skirt sit um, high-waisted, so this is like where my belly button is, and the part of the waist I'm going to measure would be the part where my body bends. So my waist is 35 inches. So I'm going to make it 34 just because I do want it to be pretty snug. Let me stand on the chair. Okay. So first I'm going to start out at that spot of the waist where I had measured just now around. And then I'm going to measure how long I want the skirt to be. So I kind of want it to be like What's that length? Like in the middle of the calf. So I'll measure in that way. So it seems to be like I want the skirt to be about 31, like 32 inches. Don't want to just cut the fabric 34 inches wide. In addition, because I'm using an elastic band, um, you'll want the fabric to be just a little bit wider so that it kind of scrunches up a little bit but because I want my skirt to be like a nice full skirt I'll do a little bit of math and make it much larger than my actual measurement all right so the basic rule that I like to follow for the elastic is I take that waist measurement and then I times it by three and then divide that figure by two so my waist measurement was 35. I want it to be a little snug so it stays on my body. So um, I'll use 34. I'll times 34 by three, which gives me 102. And then I'll divide 102 in half and that gives me 51. And then I want it to be 32 inches long. Now, we want to leave enough room for the elastic band and for a hem. So for a hem, um, I like to do rolled hems at the bottom. So I usually like to leave an inch for that. I like to do a rolled hem, I will roll it a half inch and then I'll roll, roll it another half inch and sew it flat. Okay, so I have the waistband here. It is one and a half inches long. So we want not only an extra one and a half inches on the length of the skirt so that we'll be able to fold it over, but I think probably, let's see, I think you'd want to add an extra inch to be able to roll underneath as well. Or I mean, you can just do half an inch and then have a little extra. That's what I'm going to do because I have a serger. Um, if you don't know what a serger is, just look on the inside of the seams if you're wearing like factory made clothes. It's just like a finished edge. So I'm going to be serging that edge so that I don't have to roll it underneath. So that means I'm going to be adding an extra two inches at the top and one inch at the bottom. So that's an extra three inches on a skirt that I want to be 32 inches long. So I will be cutting it 30. 
inches long. Now normally when you sew, you'll want to make room for seam allowances, but because because it's already so much wider than your actual measurement and you're using the elastic band to like scrunch it up, you don't really gotta worry about the seam allowance. It's redundant. So just leave that at that um, measurement that you did math to get. For me, it's 51. Now for the bottom, we want to widen the skirt and I want to make it about 20 inches wider than the top. So, and that's because you'll wanna be able to walk. I'm going to make the bottom 70 inches wide. Now, when it comes to actually cutting the fabric, I don't want to cut the actual length. You could if you want to, but in my opinion, the skirt's going to look a little weird with only one seam. I want two seams. I want um, each seam to be on either side of my body. So in order to do that, I'm going to take those final measurements that it came up with for the width at the top and at the bottom, and I'm gonna divide those in half. That way I will be cutting a front and a back, and when I sew them together, I will have a seam on either side. So for a 51 inch waist, I will be um, dividing that in two again, and cutting out 25 and a half inch wide fabric. Um, again, 35 inches long. And then on the bottom, I'll be cutting it 35 inches wide. So when you sew them together, they will um, form those two measurements, 51 and 70. So the way that I got my fabric from the fabric store, um, I got it cut from the bolt and this is how it came. So this is not very long. This is probably about 20 inches wide here and it's folded in half. So in total about 40 inches wide. Again, I want to cut two sides, um, 25 and a half by 35. So in order to do that, I am going to actually fold this in half the other way. So I'm gonna start with the bottom. And again, I want 35 inches. So this measurement right here is where the um, 35 mark would be. And because it's only like a little over an inch longer than that, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just gonna leave it instead of dealing with cutting it. Um, that way the skirt will actually be about 33 inches long. Okay, so I don't really know how you would measure things. Um, what I like to do is start out with the longer measurement, which would be the bottom. I go ahead and I measure that out. So um, here's the end, I'll be cutting this off. And then I like to find the middle of it. So here it is. And for the top, I'll take this middle and I will find it. And then I'll divide um, the top measurement in half and measure it on either way of this middle. So that way, the top cut will be perfectly in the middle of the lower one. And then what I'm going to do is here is the top, um, the top like waist, Area. I'm going to go ahead and cut at an angle until I meet the corner of the bottom. I am totally standing on a chair right now to show this to you. <laughs> um, but anyway, I like I said before, I'm not going to get too crazy. Um, intricate with the design and the measurements. It's just going to be a really simple skirt. So here we go. Right here is the waist and then here is the bottom and if you notice there's like a nice angle. That way um, the waist will end up fitting the way I want it to and then the bottom will have enough space for some flowiness and I'll be able to walk and shit you know. Okay, so I like totally almost forget to cut this fold in half. <laughs> um, 
don't forget to do that. Okay, so I got that fold cut in half. That way I'm not making a sleeping bag. <laughs> um, and now what it's time to do is play with the ribbon. Um, I'm going to be putting the ribbon on here before actually uh, making the skirt. So I got some ribbon here and um, I know for sure, let's see, where is it? I have this sheer like satin stuff that I thought was really pretty. So I'm actually going to be lining the bottom of the hem on here. So now I'm going to arrange the ribbon, figure out how I'm gonna do that. And then it'll be time to put it on. All right, man, so I've got all the ribbons cut out. Um, notice I left quite a bit on the edges and that's really like a, a precaution, you know, just in case. Um, and then this one is much longer because it's going to be on the bottom. So I think this is how I'm going to have the colors laid out. I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence of whether I want the, uh, the gold here because that's where it was and I don't know, I'm just going to change it around. Either way, I know I want the blue on top because it is a thinner ribbon and uh, even though there's a red and a green here, um, I really see this one as like the pop of color that stands out from the rest. So now what I'm going to do, oh, by the way, I've got two cut out. Um, again, this is a front and back, so We'll sew these ones on the front, and then these ones will be sewn on the back. Um, this one right here is going to be requiring a little bit of mass. I'm going to actually be the hem. It's an inch longer in order to roll it, so I think what I'll do is I will place this like an inch and a half above this cut here and then I'll have about half an inch of black left over by the time I roll the hem, if that makes any sense. Some people like to sew these on and then they leave like a specific amount on the edges and then they'll only sew up to like a certain point. So the side seams together and they'll leave these flaps out of the seam. That way, when they fold it inside out, these will actually like hang from the skirt, which I think looks really nice. You know, they'll, um, some people will cut these edges a certain way. Usually it's like two points, like a, you cut a triangle off the edge there. And I think that looks really nice, but for this skirt, I am going to be sewing them into the seam so that there's no ribbon hanging off the edge at all. Okay, so, <laughs> you can see my ring light. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I've got all of these ribbons measured out here just so I can, you know, have it nice and making sense anyway. So I measured up five inches and put the ribbon there and then each ribbon I attached at the next inch so that they have about an inch in between each other doing a zigzag stitch on either end of the ribbons. That way, because if I were to do a straight stitch, they'd probably end up puckering a little bit. Go. Okay, so I just sewed the first line. I still have to sew the other side and then of course all the other freaking ribbons. But I just wanted to show it right now so that I can just speed through the rest. Um, here we have the zigzags. All right, so I got all of the ribbons sewed on one side of the skirt. This is the front and I also did some applique. Oh, my and dotum. So, um, yeah, now I am working on the second one. This one, I'm not pinning them to the skirt right away. I am 
just doing that little trick that I mentioned before where I go ahead and measure as I sew. So, sewing five inches from there and then I just kind of use that as a guideline while I sew the ribbon on. So I will check back in. Hey guys, so today is day two and I've got both skirts um, finished with the ribbon on there. I ended up using a zigzag stitch for this ribbon um, at the bottom towards the pin. So now what I have to do is flip right sides together. And then I'm going to be, where am I? And then I'm going to be sewing the seams down the side. After I do that, I will attach the waistband and the hem will be last. Just be sure that when you um, pin the sides together in order to sew the side seam, that you match up the ribbons. You don't want to end up um, having to take it apart after you sewed it because yeah, you messed up. So there's that. Okay, so after you finish sewing the seam, make sure you press them open using a hot iron. This just guarantees that your seam will be nice and clean. Okay, so I went ahead and serged the um, insides of the seams here so that they would have a really nice clean finish. Um, but sergers are expensive as hell, so if you don't have one, you can either just leave it or you can use that same zigzag stitch we use to put the ribbons on. Um, and then you can use that stitch to clean it up. Or you can just use um, like one of those fray block glues to finish the edges. So you should also pay mind to your ribbons as well because they will fray. So um, you can use that fray block glue and finish the edges with it. Um, neat little trick that I like to do. Focus. Neat little trick that I like to do with satin ribbon is take lighter and melt the edges and I also went ahead and surged the waistline. So this is the waist here and um, again if you don't have a serger you wouldn't do this step. What you would do is roll it in and then when you take the waistband, I don't have it cut yet, but when you take the waistband and put it inside like it would end up being like this where it would be rolled in. So for the waistband, <clears throat> the waistband is stretchy and what you want it to do is stretch in order to fit on you. You don't want it to be laying on your body just um, without being stretched at all because then it won't stay on. So the reason why I'm saying that is because I measured 34 inches. That's what I wanted um, in order to fit on my waist. But because I want the waistband to stretch, I'm actually going to measure 33 inches of the waistband and it will be all one cut. We won't be cutting um, like a front and a back. It'll just be one round cut. Once we get it inside of the hole that we're about to create on the waist of the skirt, then we'll actually sew these together um, at the half an inch mark which will take an entire inch off of the total circumference of the waistband. So that would actually make the waistband 32 inches around, which would um, make it have to stretch in order to fit you snugly. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. So now what I'm going to do is sew a gap in the waist for me to put the waistband inside. So what I'm going to do is um, keep the skirt and set up. And then I'm going to fold it in two inches and I'm going to sew at the half inch mark. That way I will be able to um, put the waistband on the inside. So when you sew around the skirt, once you reach almost all the way back around, you're gonna wanna leave an open gap. And that is so you can um, 
put the waistband on the inside. You want to you know sew it around first before putting the waistband in. And then once we put the waistband in there, we will sew the waistband together and then we will close this gap. Okay, so I have sewn all the way around and I've left a little gap here. Um, this is the marker I had for where to stop sewing and this gap uh, leads into the little pocket that I just made. So here's the elastic band. I attached a safety pin to it and this helps you feed it through this gap that you just made. So go ahead and feed the elastic band into the um, gap you just made and then you'll use the safety pin to pull it through. Okay, so here's the waist. Um, I'll distribute the, uh, the extra here in a bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew these ends together. And once I do that, I am going to stuff them back into this gap here so that the waistband is completely in it. And then I will sew the gap. All right, so now that I've got the waistband in the gap and I have sewed um, that little opening closed, I distributed the fabric around the waistband as evenly as I thought possible. Oh, you too. So this part that I'm about to do is completely optional. Um, I am going to be sewing up and down each side seam just in this gap here. And that's because I want to keep the fabric evenly distributed and I want to prevent the waistband from twisting around inside of there and sewing um, and sewing up and down right here will help prevent that. Last up, we are going to hem the skirt. So I find it easiest to start at a seam. That way you can hide the beginning. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to be measuring a half inch and then folding it in. And then I will fold it in another half inch. Okay, so if you don't know how to do a rolled hem, I would suggest looking up some other videos that can help you more. Um, basically what I like to do as a rule of thumb is instead of using these measurement gauges here to um, keep the line straight and look where I'm sewing, I just kind of gauge the edge with the edge of the foot. And then meanwhile, I will use my right hand to feed it and I'll use my left hand to um, make some tension and pull this fabric this way. That way you get a nice clean rolled hem. And then after that, you will turn to your seamstress best friend, the hot iron, and iron it nice and flat. Okay, we're done. We're going to um, turn it right side up. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. Look at it. Wow. Mama, don't get off here. Too big. Oh yeah. What do you guys think? It's probably not the best shirt to go with it, but. That's what I was wearing already, and I didn't feel like changing my shirt or cleaning the mirror. So, let's zoom in here. Maybe you walk in a spot where the mirror isn't dirty. But here we go. This is the finished product. I think I did pretty good matching up the ribbons. Unless you look really closely, then you can see um, they're just like a tad mismatched, but... That's okay, I don't care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's 
Perfect. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna use my reflection to say goodbye to you guys. So I hope you love it. I absolutely love it myself. And um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful for you or whatever the hell you want it to be. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.